The romantic image of the Snowy River as depicted in the Man from Snowy River poem, the Man from Snowy River film, the opening episodes in the Olympic Games with the horsemen riding their horses represent a free flow of energy. This represents a freedom for people to have a river that is free, a river that is free to be dynamic. And then the community can be dynamic with the river. You cannot take all of the water out of any river system and transfer it somewhere else. 99% of the original flow went over the range when this dam was built. It only had 1% going down the river and the river virtually died. We have to bring it back up to 21% as outlined and with a possibility of going on to 28%. Then people will be happy, but we certainly won't be happy unless part of that 28% is the natural head of the moon bar flowing unimpeded by a weir or a, an aqueduct system and bringing water, diverting it back into Lake Jindabyne for re-release down here. I failed to see the logic or common sense in this and I'm sure that if the government re-examine this, they will see that the whole process is faulty. Moonbar is the river that flows into the Snowy River stream downstream of Jindabyne Dam and they aqueducted it back into the dam as the, the final act of greed. Now, Moonbar River running freely provides a, a, a natural headwater for the Snowy River stream. You know, dead water coming out of a dam, it's got no life in it, no, no indicators of, of life and health, whereas letting Moonbar River run freely into the snow, it gives it that natural headwater. This gorge, before it was filled in, was the slot which drained the old Pleistocene Lake Jindabyne. And it gradually was hydraulic out. The rock is in the junction of a joint between two, two fault zones, the Cobbin Creek Fault and the Jindabyne Thrust, which runs along this side of the dam and the rock was all broken. So when the water was coming down here during the snow melt, had lots of energy in it, was able to hydraulic this loose fractured rock out and created the Jindabyne Gorge. And all of our dams are built in similar places. They're all, a lot of them at the junction of fault zones and they're all built in what were gorges which sometimes drained prior lakes. So this is what we're looking at. We can read the landscape. The whole thing about the, the Snowy Mountain Scheme is that it's, it's a water harvesting scheme. They've got every creek, every stream and every river aqueducted and dammed off and tunnelled into a system that puts it into their storages and they, they've got two systems basically. They can drop it down out into the west, either through the Murrumbidgee system, through the Tumut, or they can send it down to the south out through the Murray system. Right oh now that black pipe that we can see over on the other side of the river is the old siphon pipe. Uh, it's 50 centimetres diameter and it used to flow full bore into the river. Now you can see there's not a great deal of flow in that river but as we come back across the plunge pond we come back across here and there's a little channel outlet down here from that concrete bunker. That little bunker down there is the mini hydro generator shed, or we should say the micro generator shed, because it also operates as a control valve for the environmental flows now from Lake Jindabyne into the river. Now you can see the flow that's passing through there, that's a pretty minuscule flow. That's the total flow of the Snowy River as it stands at present. Uh, the once mighty Snowy River. You could step across that. Now that used to come out of the outlet pipe on the other side, the old siphon pipe, but that's now defunct. And these two big pipes up in the background above the plunge pool, they're the outlets with the big diffuser nozzles on the end. 
and these diffuser nozzles are designed to dissipate the energy of the water as it leaves the pipe and spray it out and take all of the kinetic energy out of it so that you don't get erosion problems in the plunge pool. We don't believe any of the water should go into the dam because they still have to supplement any water that flows down the moon bar in a 12 month period still has to be supplemented with added environmental flows. It, it, this is where the whole thing is crazy. It does not make sound common sense or good land management or waterway management practice. You know, it's crazy. But I'm talking about megalitres of water a day relative to what the irrigators are taking out even to give the whole Snowy River back. I mean, maybe you need to take the whole Snowy River back for a few years as an allocation to get the system working again. I mean, me personally, I, I come up as a, I reckon it needs to have half the water put back. I think it'd be a very generous allocation to the irrigators from the Snowy River system if we were to give them half the water that the river used to run with. I mean, they've had the lot for so long. I think it's time to give back in a proper spirit of wanting to get the Snowy River to live again. Uh, certainly we're on an absolute minimum flow at present, and this is understandable in the extreme drought conditions we've got, but it's nothing like the flows that they have said were supposed to be flowing at this point in time. We were supposed to have seen a 6% flow, environmental flow in the Snowy River over the last 12 months. And all the calculations that we've done so far can only come up with 4%. So we're losing out somewhere along the way.